jet transition. two different design concepts. Both of them optimized to fulfill the role for which they're intended. It is not easy in these times to specify the operational requirements and satisfy all pertinent questions in designing an airplane. Considerations like payload, including the number of passengers, weight of baggage, range, field length, speed and altitude will direct the designer in shaping the best airplane for the desired job. The reason for aircraft to have jet engines is simply the global transport requirement for speed and size. Only the jet engine can produce the propulsion qualities required to fly faster. The passenger appeal for a fast and comfortable travel has defined the pattern of the modern transport aircraft. Not only faster, the jet engine can fly higher. At the best engine operating conditions, that match with the best airframe operating conditions. The jet engine can produce the enormous power required to satisfy the demands of airframe size made by the modern transport environment, allowing the introduction of wide-body aircraft into the market. The consequences of the power plant installation of flying higher and faster are quite obvious. A jet airplane with handling qualities different from the turboprop. This video has been prepared to help pilots understand the basic differences between a propeller-driven and a jet aircraft. Of course, the turboprop aircraft has been chosen as the basic object of comparison with the jet. But the matter is also pertinent if a piston propeller aircraft is used instead of a turboprop. The information presented herein is properly addressed in the Embraer jet family initial training and during the familiarization of the pilot with the handling characteristics of these planes. But he discovered here, in a systematic way, to get a clear vision of what are the elementary differences between those two concepts of flying. It is quite appropriate to start discussing the flight handling by showing the significance of the turbine engine installed on the jets. Jet engine is actually a slang name of what is called gas turbine engine. The name is exactly what it says, a turbine engine that is operated by gas rather than steam or water. The gas, the air itself, which operates the turbine, is the product of the combustion that takes place when a fuel is mixed and burned with the air passing through the engine. The simplest gas turbine engine for aircraft is a turbojet. Air entering the front case in large quantities is greatly heated and accelerated by being burned with fuel. Then the results of combustion are exhausted through the rear jet nozzles. There are several types of gas turbine engines, namely the turbojet, the turbofan, the turboprop, and the turboshaft. And they differ basically on how the energy of the expanding gases is converted into propulsive force. In the turbojet configuration, the thrust is provided only by the high velocity gases exhausting through the nozzle. No feature is added to achieve the propulsive force. In the turboprop engine, the exhaust gases from the basic turbojet engine are used to rotate a turbine that drives a propeller, which is responsible for imparting a relatively small acceleration to a large mass of air. Thus, the added propeller develops the propulsion force. 
The turbofan engine is much like a turboprop, except that the propeller is replaced by a fan with rotating blades and stationary vanes. Actually a compressor of large diameter. The fan is enclosed in a duct. Part of the air entering engine intake after being processed by the fan section bypasses the central engine core and expands in a separate nozzle to provide cold thrust. The bypassing air is not burned with the fuel. In the Embraer regional jets, the air leaving the fan surrounds the engine for its full length and it is discharged through the jet nozzle. In other turbofan configurations, you might find engines with short ducts where the fan air is exhausted directly into the air without being mixed with the nozzle air. Now, leaving the turbojet engine aside, let's compare the performance of the turboprop and turbofan engines. Turboprop versus turbofan performance. Because of the propeller reduction gearing and the intricate propeller governing feature, the turboprop engine is heavier and more complicated than a turbofan engine of equivalent power. However, the turboprop performance during takeoff and climb is remarkably greater than the turbofan engine as a result of the ability of the propeller to accelerate a large mass of air at low flight speeds. But check what happens with the propulsive efficiency in the chart and see what happens when airspeed increases. The propulsive efficiency of the conventional turboprop decreases substantially as airspeed increases about 300 knots true airspeed and is null around 400 knots true airspeed. While the turbofan engine produces power efficiently up to and above supersonic speeds, it is clear that at high speed required for transport aircraft, the propeller is quite unsuitable and explains to some extent why they were offset by the introduction of the turbofan engines. It is very important to observe the flight regimes found to be suitable for the turboprop and turbofan engines. Comparatively, the turbofan is expected to have its maximum performance at higher altitudes and speed, of course, than its turboprop brother. From the pilot's point of view, operating a propeller-driven aircraft or a jet aircraft bears some important differences. Operational aspects of jets and turboprops. The rotating propeller itself is responsible for various aerodynamic effects especially when it is pitched or yawed, and during power changes. Let's see these effects now. Well, due to the direction of rotation of the propellers to the right, clockwise when viewed from the rear, and this configuration is adopted by most manufacturers, the spiraling slipstream strikes the fin on the left, causing a left-turning moment about the aircraft vertical axis. This effect is perceptible at high propeller speeds and low forward speeds and varies from aircraft to aircraft. Consider also the offset of thrust created by downward moving propeller blades developing more thrust than upward blade. This result in that the center of thrust of the left engine is closer to airplane fuselage center line than that of the right engine because the right engine has a longer arm than the left engine. Another component of yawing force appears. Realize that when the left engine is inoperative, there is greater yawing force than if instead the right engine is made inoperative. All these effects make it urgent for the pilot to use properly the elevator and rudder to prevent all pitching and yawing forces created. And of course, all these undesired power effects do not exist in the turbofan aircraft. Its propeller slipstream simply does not exist. The critical engine concept has no meaning on turbofan aircraft because all the power effects we described are absent. Remember the critical engine? This is the engine whose failure at takeoff is more critical from the control standpoint. All power effects act on the aircraft, yawing it to the left if the left engine is made inoperative. The asymmetrical thrust generated by the right engine will add to the power effects, making directional control more difficult. So the left engine is the critical engine when both propellers rotate to the right. Propeller slipstream and drag.